All of us are addicts. Some are addicted to their job, others to a hobby, and some of you are even addicted to love. Unfortunately, today there are too many in a self-destructive spiral addicted to drugs. Drug addiction has no demographic barriers and can hit almost any community and does. I don't care if you're a rock star, Hollywood icon, NBA legend, or a surgeon, we are all potential victims to a rising tide of drug-assisted despair, even death. Today, there are no shortage of enemies hoping to feed that beast. Some wish to hurt us because we are geopolitical enemies, and others simply because it's profitable. Life is hard enough without the challenge of addiction. We all know someone that has been touched by tragedy. And for some of you, it might even be personal, like yours truly. In the end, why we fall matters less than what it's going to take to pick ourselves up. This goes beyond your personal demons. Your nation is under attack. Our enemies, both foreign and domestic, care only about how to profit from your pain and will not stop until we take the fight to them. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. The drug trade and with it drug addiction has evolved through the ages. Organized crime has always been at the center, whether it was the trafficking of heroin, marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, and today, of course, it's fentanyl. While the, the incentives for the industry haven't changed, what has changed is the face of the enemy. Today, America is under attack from nation states like China to Mexican cartels on our southern border. China has looked to undermine the United States on a range of issues. So it's difficult to say with any precision that the flood of fentanyl into our country is any more than just a profit, profit incentive. But anything that looks to harm our country, including the very young, only helps increase instability and certainly fits the narrative of an enemy state. As for the Mexican, Mexican cartels, these aren't gangs anymore, people. They are paramilitary organizations with sophisticated weapons and tactics that will use any means at their disposal to advance their business. Extortion, kidnapping, and even murder are tools of the trade. Today, fentanyl overdose has become the leading cause of death for young Americans. At first, China was the primary source shipping both the powder and tools necessary for the fentanyl drug trade. But lately, the Mexican cartels figured out they can just buy the chemical building blocks, and now some are producing the drug themselves. All of this begs the question, what is this stuff? What is fentanyl? All in, it is a very powerful synthetic opioid, similar to morphine, but 50 to 100 times more potent. The potential for overdose, even death, is just that much greater. Close to 107,000 people in the United States died from drug overdoses last year. 64,000 of those deaths were associated with fentanyl. That's more than the, the number of Americans who lost their lives in the Vietnam and Iraq War combined. Today, fentanyl is being mixed in with a lot of other drugs, so often that the victims don't even know they're at risk. There are some steps that can be taken. Test strips can be used to find out if a drug is laced with fentanyl. Last year, Customs and Border Protection seized 14,700 pounds of fentanyl. That's just what we seized. Who knows how much actually got in? One kilogram, or 2.2 pounds, is enough to kill half a million people. Opinions about what we should or shouldn't do, especially when it comes to the security of our southern border, are as diverse as the electorate. Some want to put up a wall, and others would rather focus on immigration policy. We can debate tactics, but what isn't up for debate is that we are under attack. Our enemies will continue to use our indecision and political divide to their advantage. And if left unchallenged, will lead to even more deaths and heartbreak. Each day, 
that goes by without these core issues being addressed means more tragic calls to the parents of the young victims. All right, what we've discussed so far, that's maybe half the problem. We've talked about fentanyl, our enemies, drug-related deaths, safety steps, and what needs to be done. What we haven't talked about is the enemy that faces you each and every day when you look in the mirror. As the saying goes, we have met the enemy and they are us. Life is about choices. We can choose to avoid things that we know in the long run will hurt us. Some believe they won't fall victim to addiction and others just won't care. There will come a time when you do care. And when that moment comes, you probably won't be equipped to dig yourself out of the abyss. There'll be lots of help, all sorts of solutions from drugs, therapy, programs, you name it. But in the end, the only one that can get this job done is you. Each of us come at this through our own life experiences. I can't tell you what's right for you, but I can share with you what worked for me. Most of you know I was a recording artist long before I ever hit the world of finance. But before I achieved some measure of success, I was just a struggling, confused, wannabe musician hoping to follow in the footsteps of some of my idols like Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton. Somehow, I managed to get into the now famous Berkeley School of Music in Boston. Well, in addition to learning about scales, chords, composition, jazz, rock, and the creative arts, Berkeley was also the perfect place to learn all about drugs. How could I avoid it? My idols all took drugs, so I chose to believe it must be part of the creative process. The path into heroin addiction and how I got there really doesn't matter. In the end, the story for former addicts is much the same. You're at risk, have real or emotional pain, you want some relief, and yeah, it just feels good. Of course, once you try to stop, you find out just how weak you really are. I'm sure today there are countless therapies, drugs, programs that can all help. I can only tell you that for me, none of the above worked. Oh, they worked for a while, and I was able to get myself out of the cycle for, for a period of time, but it didn't take much for me to slip back into the world that was just all too comfortable. I had to hit rock bottom. That's really the first step. Rock bottom will be different for all of you. For me, it was several near-death, drug-related episodes, but all in, I was convinced there was no way out. For you, it might be your family throwing in the towel, finally turning their back on you, or a loved one who walks out of your life because they've just simply had enough. It's different for all of us, but the desperation, it's the same. Your only path out is to find something you care about, some goal that if you can just reach it, might be enough to fill the void in your life that drugs fill today. For me, it was something so contrary to my life experience, maybe, maybe that's why it worked. I wanted to be a police officer. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I saw this movie Serpico starring Al Pacino about a crusading police officer fighting corruption, and I just wanted to be him. It could have been anything. What I needed was a dream, something I could hold on to. I never did become a cop, but I spent the next three years trying. I was massively overweight. I started working out. First time I ran around my high school track, I didn't make it halfway around before I fell to the ground in pain. But I had made the first step. Trust me, it was a long path with several failures along the way. But each time, I kept that goal in sight. No, I never made it. But it kept me alive with a purpose. And the rest is history. And maybe, maybe that was the prize. I have a history. Life went on. Another day in that cesspool, and I wouldn't be here to tell this story. Your path, your solution, will be different from mine. But I am certain of one thing. There's only one person who knows what it's going to take, you. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.